ludicrous the amount of fuel that we use. We use 300 million gallons of petroleum diesel a month in California. We use 1.3 billion gallons of gasoline a month in this state. Diesel is the number one reason why we have smog and pollution. The particulate matter, you can almost see how big a particulate of diesel is after it's burned. I mean, you, you've seen the black smoke come out of diesels, right? Mr. Diesel, yeah, is the, is the one the inventor of the diesel engine, and, and it's, um, you know, it was originally designed to run on some form of vegetable oil. And but got squashed, you know, out of the marketplace um, by the petroleum industry. What do you? What would you say the problems are with gasoline and diesel? Uh, um, well, you know, pollutants, obviously, and also the fact that, you know, um, that. The, People are dying over it. You know that's a problem. You know, um, and it's in, it's just it's just like you know we're we're cocaine addicts in this country, and the cocaine is gasoline. You know, it's just like. <laughs> <laughs> chemicals that no one needs that get put into the air and basically kills the environment. But that's the only way I can get to work right now. Like, and we just accept the fact that we can't continue to live this way. It's been less than a hundred years that, that this world has been running on petroleum. Really, a hundred years ago, there were more horses than there were cars. And it was unusual to see vehicles the way it's only been a hundred years and we're using up like more than half of the world's supply. Uh, um, so personally, why do you continue to use gas even though you know? Well, because I need to get around and I, I run my vehicle, you know? It's just like, why do we choose to use any type of power, you know? We can use all of our resources and we can all go live in, you know, in, Months of the parts of Montana that are uninhabited right now, you know, and it's just like I am a I'm a gasoline addict as much as anybody else is, you know. We're used to using diesel fuel from petroleum products, and we're going to continue using it until we run out. The disadvantage is that eventually we are going to run out of petroleum fuel, and we have to look at alternatives now. Biodiesel is a fuel manufactured from fatty oils, whether they be chicken fat, uh, of soybean oils, or um, canola oil. Biodiesel is not straight vegetable oil, which is where you hear pe about people going to a McDonald's and getting the used cooking oil and putting it in their tank and running their vehicles. It seems to me like one of the most immediate things anybody can do to affect their, the quality of their impact on the planet has to do with the choice of vehicle that they drive because obviously they're going to drive something and I think one of the biggest impacts that any of us can have is to decide that we're going to drive uh, a green car of some kind and for me biodiesel is just a no-brainer. I started using biodiesel because I, I had I had was it was using a, a Prius and I felt like it just wasn't far enough. The Toyota Prius it's a hybrid and um, and so you know I, I instantly when I went from that from the car I had before you know I doubled my gas mileage but the problem was I'm still consuming gas. Part of the of uh, being a an advocate for sustainability is you need to walk the talk. This is why I have solar on my house. Uh, this is why. I drive biodiesel powered vehicles because it's an active demonstration of technology that does work. I have had a uh, Mercedes sedan, a 1984 sedan, for the last 35,000 miles. I have not put any petroleum in it. But, uh, so currently I have a sedan, a wagon, another sedan, and now this pickup um, running on B100 biodiesel. And this truck was a, a way of showing people that you can run biodiesel in 100% pure form in new vehicles without any issue. Um, this is a 2001 Dodge uh, 2500, uh, just 
a standard old uh, full-size pick-em-up truck. I've always driven diesel cars. Old Mercedes are my favorite car in the whole world. They're very safe and solid and really comfortable and great handling. And I just love driving them, but I felt embarrassed because I was always, you know, having diesel smoke out the back. And it's kind of like, <clears throat> excuse me while I drive. I discovered that I could put biodiesel in my tank and just like two gallons for every 10. And it would make a huge difference, not in just the mileage, just a little bit in mileage, but mainly in like the smell. The exhaust of diesel fuel burning biodiesel smells like donuts or it smells like french fries. It's pretty nice to be able to pull into a place where everybody's filling their truck up with petroleum or petroleum diesel and drive around the back and, and pour this vegetable oil essentially, that's what it smells like, into your truck and drive off and when you start it up you get this blast of, of like <laughs> fried chicken or french fry <laughs> smoke coming out the side. It's pretty neat. If you want to buy biodiesel here in the Southern California area, there are a couple of vendors that are selling biodiesel up in Santa Barbara. McCormick's has B100 at one pump in downtown. My name is Ken Olson. I am president of McCormick's Oil Company in Santa Barbara. We are a distributor for Chevron and very other, various other uh, refiners. And we sell in this area uh, B100 as well as B20 and frankly any blend uh, a customer may want. The term biodiesel refers to biodiesel in its pure form, B100. And, and that term, so if you come to a pump and it says biodiesel on the pump, the biodiesel shall be 100% biodiesel. If it says biodiesel blends, what happens is people will blend biodiesel and petroleum fuels. So the most common blend is a 20% blend of biodiesel and an 80% blend of petroleum diesel and that's called B20. I mix it. I don't run 100% biodiesel. I can't afford to. So <laughs> The price of uh, biodiesel is what it is today uh, because we have yet to realize the tax credit of a dollar a gallon that the IRS has approved. President Bush signed the uh, work uh, energy bill and the IRS has yet to figure out the details as to how to actually pass the dollar on. So although biodiesel today is $3.99, were we to get the dollar, it would be $2.99, and petroleum diesel is $2.69. So there would only be a 30 cent difference between pure B100, that's 100% virgin soybean oil, and the petrodiesel that is sold at truck stops today. The world pays a very high price for the use of petroleum fuels through um, environmental effects, through even wars and other things. So the price that I pay for biodiesel might cost me more fiscally, but the price in my heart is cheaper. So I actually bought the truck to use the biodiesel. So that's the reason I bought the truck. More people are using biodiesel, and as the word gets out, uh, intellectually, no one challenges the product. It is, uh, it's a good idea to use a renewable source of energy uh, that doesn't pollute our, our precious air. I mean, this is essentially cooking oil. In Ventura, there's the harbor, the fuel dock has a B100 at the pump. You have biodiesel in that tank? Uh, yeah, this, this one? is well this is my transfer tank. Can you go the normal speed limits and everything? Or is there any? You can speed go limit? as fast as your foot'll let you. It's actually got a little more power they say and it seems like it does too. It okay. smells better, it smells like popcorn. <laughs> The primary disadvantage of using biodiesel right now is relation to the supply because it's very, it's not easy to run biodiesel when there's only one station in Ventura selling biodiesel at the vehicle pump, one in Santa Barbara. There are three places to get biodiesel in the LA basin right now. I went down to LA from Olympia, Washington and made a trip um, 
almost entirely on biodiesel. I got most of the way. I had to I had to fuel up about five gallons of regular oil, petroleum, diesel. But it's tough because there's there's virtually nothing down the I-5 corridor. It's wild, like you know, doing a trip like this because you know once you start thinking about how can I get a certain amount of distance on what I've got, and you don't think about having to fuel up at fuel stations where everybody else is going. It's just it's exciting. It's like being in some kind of World War II drama where you're worried about supply lines and stuff like that. You know, it's a totally different way of thinking about your traveling. Um, and, and I feel a lot more connected to it. Now, I don't have to do this back home because we've got a pump station back home in, uh, in Washington, but traveling uh, on a road trip, you know, you have to make other plans and other arrangements if you want to do it. So I got this at a, a fuel company in the middle of LA somewhere and had an extra five gallons to fill up, so here we are. Because I honestly don't know if there's enough land mass to grow enough fuel at, the, at our current consumption rates to s completely support biodiesel. These are some really big questions, but it doesn't stop me from doing it because I want to be a part of that future change and I want to be a part of getting people to think differently about what they're consuming. And because I, I really believe that it all, you know, it's every little exchange that you have with somebody even if it's just seeing a bumper sticker and having them wonder what it is at some other point in time they're going to hear about it and they're going to remember it because my sticker was there and i was driving it and that's that's what's really important to me is being a part of that change the use of biodiesel is a method for using a fuel in our present infrastructure sort of as the on-ramp to future change so you can't say that the, the, our use of biodiesel will allow us to shut down one oil rig. The only way we're going to shut down the oil rigs to not have to drill in the um, Anwar to reduce our importation and dependence on petroleum oil is through conservation. And that entails a change in how we live as Americans and looking at our use of fuel.